the business owner or the content creator that has done the hard work of writing and publishing a book will always have an advantage over the person who has not. People want to have authors on their podcasts. People want to have authors on their stages speaking. Even if you know a lot about your subject, you'll learn even more by taking the leap and deciding, I'm gonna write a book. The point of writing a book is not direct income from the book, but it's the exposure, leads, clients, customers. YouTube Secrets has actually generated millions of dollars. Welcome back to the Think Media Podcast. Sean Cannell here. And in this episode, we're really gonna be talking about why every YouTube creator should write a book. And I'm gonna be covering why it will make you a better content creator, how you can create additional income streams from a book in multiple ways, one of the best ways to strengthen your personal brand, and lessons I've learned having written multiple books. As of today, I've technically written four books, and I'm gonna be revealing a story about some of those lessons. And this is gonna be a two-part series, so definitely subscribe and stick around for all of the Think Media Podcast episodes, because I believe this will be valuable for you. But if you have not seen uh, my best-selling book, I co-wrote it with my friend Benji Travis. It's called YouTube Secrets, and we just did the second edition of the book. And it's out on physical, ebook, as well as audiobook. But here are the stats so you can kind of know from what authority and credibility I'm coming from when I talk about writing a book. And so YouTube Secrets, both editions, have sold over 105,000 copies. The book has received over 3,122 reviews, and it has directly generated over $350,000. So I'll break more of that down as we go throughout these two-part series. Um, and that's directly, there's indirect uh, revenue as well. And I think that that is one of the big opportunities for you as you consider, should you or should you not write a book? But one of the things that I also have to disclose is that this is actually my fourth book. Um, the first one would have been a book called Get Notice, Embarrassing. I had to delete it, but it was an ebook. And it really was just it was kind of a rushed effort. I think it added value to some people, but it was like a, what, 40 page ebook or something like that, that I posted on Amazon. The key though, was I learned some things and it helped my next one be a little bit better. Now my second book, and this is a valuable lesson, was called YouTube for Churches. The only format that I released that book in was ebook, but it was a very powerful resource. And I just designed the cover on Photoshop at the time. I wrote it all out in Microsoft Word. I had a lady that was a part of our church named Rachel help me edit the book. I used this software called EpubStar and I launched it on Amazon. But it had so many of the benefits we're going to talk about and it was relatively easy to produce. What's cool is these days it's even easier to self-publish a book. But that was very helpful for building my credibility, opening doors, it led to speaking engagements, consulting engagements. At the time, I was a director of communications at a church, and it really gave me a whole other platform to launch off of in terms of my expertise. And so we're going to get into, over these two episodes, 10 different reasons, um, 12 different reasons of why I think every YouTube creator should write a book and really every business owner and entrepreneur. But after writing YouTube for churches, Eventually, Benji and I got together and we self-published the first edition of YouTube Secrets. That would be the most professional step into the book writing process and by far the biggest impact. And then just within the last kind of like year and a half, YouTube Secrets second edition came out, which was heavily overhauled from the first version but was not really an entirely new book, although it was a new ISBN number, I believe, and some other things. So all that to say is I've done this a few times. Um, there are others, and I'll introduce you to one because today's podcast is actually brought to you by startyourbook.live. I'm co-hosting a free training with my friend Chandler Bolt from Self Publishing School. He's really the go-to expert. And should you want to kind of lean into this or learn more about this, I highly recommend checking out the show notes and registering for that free class. But uh, personally, I have learned a lot of lessons and discovered the benefits of writing a book, um, why you should consider writing a book, and specifically as a YouTube creator. And so let's dive into these tips and lessons 
Number one, it helps you organize your thoughts better. One of the reasons why I think every YouTube creator should write a book is you are essentially a thought leader, you're a knowledge worker, and your job is to communicate ideas. One of the challenges, of course, with communication is clarity, is organization, is refining your ideas, is speaking powerfully and communicating powerfully. And so the simple practice or decision to write a book could be one of the most beneficial decisions you ever make if this was the only point that benefited you when it comes to writing a book. Because if it's you versus a competitor that are communicating the same thing on YouTube in your business and your ideas are more clear, they're more refined, they're stronger, then you're going to have an advantage. And the simple process of committing to writing a book forces clarity of your ideas, helps you refine your tips, advice, and knowledge, and will help you gain greater clarity about your topic. Number two, writing a book helps you learn and grow. So I've learned that writing a book all the way back, even in my first book called Get Noticed, and really in, in full transparency, what ended up happening was my friend Phil Cook was doing a, co an, a compilation book, which is kind of a cool strategy, where he got friends of his experts of similar thought leadership. And because he was actually a consultant at the church we were working at, and I was the director of communications, and he had me, I think, write about social media. Because for the church at the time, I was doing social media, Facebook, Facebook ads, Twitter, personal brand for the pastor, the church, social media, not just YouTube. So I had a chapter, which was like a long chapter, like 30 pages, 35 pages. And I thought, why not turn that content that I'd already written for him that was just no money exchange or anything. It was just for a chance to kind of be featured and be published. And therefore, I was just sitting on this content. So I was like, hey, why don't I upload a cover, upload that onto Amazon Kindle, and why not? And I sold it for like 99 cents. And it just, it was good. It just wasn't more than like a chapter turned into a 99 cent ebook. And so it got some positive reviews and some not so positive reviews. But here's my point is even on that very first book I ever did, it forced me to learn and grow. And it was like a nice first step towards then writing YouTube for Churches, which was a full and complete book, maybe around 100 pages. And, and then fast forward to today, YouTube Secrets is the best-selling YouTube strategy book of all time. There's reasons for that. One is getting coaching and help and getting listening to experts and not trying to do it on your own. But also because I had done it a couple of times before. This is why in every area, I always want to encourage you, like start messy, start before you're ready. You might have heard that I've got three, four failed YouTube channels before my successful one, but failures are just the stepping stones to success. The commitment to just doing it, doing a version of it, doing another one, and then doing another one. You could very well be a best-selling New York Times author, but maybe not in your first book. The willingness to just start messy in every area, including this one, could be the key. And what I've learned is that 99% of people will not embrace the pain and the challenge and the difficulty and the discipline, honestly, that it takes to embrace writing a book. Now, I, as you stick throughout this two-part series, there's ways that may make it so much easier. But nevertheless, it's still going to take some effort, right? And so it forces you to level up. It's a good personal development exercise. It'll help you be able to explain your subject better. What will happen in embracing the process, even little nuances will force you to research a little bit more deeply, or as you're writing and you hit a block, you'll be like, oh, shoot. And you have to go look stuff up, research it more. Maybe you order some other books to cross-reference. And so kind of number one and number two, if this was all it did for you, you again will be a better content creator, a better thought leader, a better leader, a better subject matter expert. Even if you know a lot about your subject, you'll learn even more by taking the leap and deciding I'm going to write a book. 
Now, the an objection might be, well, Sean, you know, what relevance do books have in today's world? And we're going to hit those as we go through more points. But again, simply the commitment of writing the book will influence what you do elsewhere. And I would argue these first two points are enough. But let's go to number three. Number three, it's a great way to earn money. Now, some people would argue that writing a book is not a very good way to write money, especially if you go traditional publishing. I recommend for the majority of people listening to this episode of the Think Media Podcast, I would go self-publishing. Chances are because maybe you don't even have publishers knocking on your door, but also because of the hassle, the length of time it takes, do they even care, like different things. And there's so many pros and cons, it's a conversation to another time. But the cool thing about self-publishing is arguably it's the more lucrative path. When you go traditional, you get the prestige and you maybe get some distribution, but a lot of times you'll make $1.25 per book. You'll make less than a dollar per book. Whereas in self-publishing, just uploading it to Amazon using Amazon's tools on a physical book, you're making seven, eight, nine dollars per book. On an ebook, you're at five bucks, you're gonna keep three. You can make all this money on audiobooks. And so even if you only sell a few copies, you can make actual legitimate money self-publishing from the book itself. What most people would argue, though, is that the point of writing a book is not direct income from the book, but it's the exposure, leads, clients, customers, speaking opportunities in the doors that it opens. So let's break this down, to, though. Number three is writing a book is a great way to earn money, and you can earn from the physical book and the ebook. We've earned and collected now about $300,000 from YouTube Secrets. It is just on Amazon, distributed through Amazon, through all their self-publishing tools. That's the physical book and the ebook. The audio book has generated another 50,000. Deeper than that though, what about clients, leads, people that know, like, and trust you, discovery of the YouTube channel, all of the above. YouTube Secrets has actually generated millions of dollars if you think about clients, leads, and there's some direct tracking, but I think the other way to think about it is brand lift. And what brand lift means is just the authority, awareness that comes from writing a book. And when people, when the perception of your brand is strengthened and when more leads, clients, and awareness comes in, if you have products and services, which we do at Think Media, then that leads to more money being earned. In fact, what that free class that Chandler and I are co-hosting is about is how to write and publish a book and how to add six figures in revenue to your business this year by publishing a book. A huge key there, right, is that that six figures, over $100,000, for the majority is not going to come from book sales. Some money can come in that way, but it's what is that leading to? What else is that leading to? Number four, writing a book opens up more chances for success. Increased opportunity, speaking podcasts. One of the things as someone that likes to have guests on the very Think Media podcast is I love having authors on because I know a couple of things. They have done the hard work of getting clarifying their ideas, right? They have learned and gro grown in the process. They are deeper subject matter, matter experts. It's not to say that someone can't be a deep subject matter, matter expert if they haven't written a book. But there's such an acceleration of trust in my mind if they have a book. I'm like, okay, awesome. Not only that, it helps me as a podcast interviewer because oftentimes I, I basically 100% of the time, they either send me the book or I purchase it and then I tab through it and I can find some of their frameworks and their ideas, which helps me conduct an interview and make it valuable for you here listening to the Think Media podcast. So people want to have authors on their podcast. People want to have authors on their stages speaking, virtual events or actual in-person events. And then media. So getting discovered, YouTube Secrets was has been listed in many publications now in various ways. But I think uh, Vice, rest in peace, by the way, didn't they just go bankrupt? Um, somebody I'm sure will acquire them. Uh, Forbes, Entrepreneur, a few different places. So you could get featured in media and writing a book is helpful for that which lifts your brand. But also, did you know that Amazon is a search engine? So even writing a good book, you can rank for something specific on Amazon. It's its own search engine and get discovered on Amazon. 
versus just getting discovered on social or just getting discovered on YouTube or just getting discovered on podcasts. So it just kicks open more chances for success. And then number five, writing a book makes your personal brand stronger. And so a business owner with a published book has an advantage. A content creator with a published book has an advantage over a business owner or a content creator that does not. And so the reason I really believe now, especially for the majority, I would argue of the Think Media podcast community that is teaching something, education, entrepreneur, business owner. Again, if you're if you're heavy entertainment, this might not be relevant, although it's fascinating to see how many kind of quote unquote YouTubers over the years have written a book that are more entertainment. It's it's sometimes more of a humorous angle or a memoir angle, and all of those things are relevant as well. One of the things on the class that I'm doing with Chandler, he he helps people do fiction and memoirs and legacy books and different things like that. But where this is really aligned is if you have a product, service, someday you plan on creating one, you're teaching something, you're educating. The alignment is so strong and there's maybe a lot of people that are your competitors. So imagine one that when someone's comparing options and they see, okay, you're a published author, you got a book on Amazon, it's got a few positive reviews, they can see that you've organized your ideas, they can see that right? You can mail that to them. They call books as the new business cards and the better business cards. So you send them a book in the mail and they go, oh my gosh. And then they want to hire you, work with you. It just becomes this way to build your personal brand and the business owner or the content creator that has done the hard work of writing and publishing a book will always have an advantage over the person who has not. And so are you thinking about writing a book? Do you have any more questions? I want to encourage you. Part two is coming out with the second seven reasons. We covered five and a little bit of the backstory in this episode. So definitely subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you're interested in checking out the free class on how to write and publish a book that will add six figures and revenue to your business this year, go to startyourbook.live, not .com, dot .live, not .live startyourbook.live or hit the link in the description. Chandler's going to be breaking down how to use a book to double your lead sales and referrals, how to guarantee the book is set up to actually make money from day one, how to write your book in a weekend without writing a single word, pretty powerful. And this is why what's so, like, I wish I knew a lot of these strategies back when I was writing Get Noticed. And that's why I'm so grateful that I've discovered self-publishing school since then because a lot of times people make it too hard. They get lost in the details or they start, but they don't finish. The book's just on your hard drive. It's just on Google Docs. It's in Word. And so I think if this is it is all interesting to you, then definitely check out startyourbook.live, how to successfully launch your book and create a six-figure book funnel. Um, really cool class. And you know it's not for everybody because this might not resonate with you, but if you're thinking about it, then definitely check all of that out and rate and review the podcast if you are grateful for the Think Media podcast. My name is Sean Cannell, rhymes with YouTube channel, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.